This conference will Stratton now be style. recorded. People watch the movie, they'll be like, who's this guy? If you go on like a swearing, you know, diatribe, yeah, and then I can cut that out. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for uh, joining me for another conversation, a hope actually conversation. So, yeah, we got we're rocking the beanies today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did, I did not plan that. But the snow is outside. Yeah. Good day to go skiing. You've been skiing today already. I'm going later yeah. with the kids. So. Um, I hot hair nasty nasty hot yes hair. So. yes beautiful so yeah let's talk about you tell me where you grew up uh you know what that was like what did you do as a kid yeah um i'm a west sider so i uh, grew up in price hill and del high um <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Simple, simple, simple town stuff, I guess. I don't know. I was a, uh, I was a church kid, so I grew up in the church, um, and just my best friends were church friends, and did like sleepovers, and went skiing to Perfect North, and just random stuff. When did you start getting into more uh, performance stuff or acting, things like that? Well. I started singing at a very young age. My mom has a, or my parents have a video of me at like three years old singing. I don't even know what I was singing because I was probably not even singing real words, but <laughs> I, it's just me on a microphone, like, uh, like randomly at a church. Why we were at the church, I don't know. Just little three-year-old Greg just holding the mic and whatever. Um, and so I, I started young and I just, I just love the attention. I loved performing. I love singing. Did my first uh, like show, Wizard of Oz. I was the Scarecrow um, <laughs> in fifth grade. Um, yeah, and just continued to love theater. Uh, loved singing um, and d doing it wherever I could. Got into a community theater in high school, uh, which I did till I was in college. Tried to do college theater that didn't really work out um but still did community theater here and there um and yeah i just love love doing love doing shows love doing singing acting um yeah. this this is technically my first movie um i was in a movie with nick jonas called goat i don't know if anyone remembers that movie um but they cut me <laughs> <laughs> they cut the scene i was in so there's like this bar scene and you know people are there and we're doing whatever and um and i was standing there like with my drink and i'm like having a conversation or whatever and the main actor uh not nick jones but the other guy like walks by me and so they shot from this angle and then we shot from this angle and then they shot from that angle and i was in every single i made sure i was in the shot so i so i like i'd be like mm -hmm. <laughs> like come in <laughs> yeah like sneak, right. kind of sneak in you know yeah. so um me and my wife got that movie and we put it in and we were like I was excited but we were watching it and I was we both were like this movie is terrible we didn't like it I you know don't uh but ever, we were like this is terrible like we were just like this is stupid the main actor was not relatable I was just like I don't like this guy at all so we were like well let's just skip to my scene so like we reround to the part and I was like, oh okay this is it and it was shot here in Cincinnati, and it was a bar over by UC. And so they're at it, and they're like, the guy's hanging out, and they're day drinking or whatever. And then they're like, oh, yeah, boo, I'm upset. I'm in the fret, whatever. And then they go to the next scene, and they're like, woo, shots, woo. And then he's making out with the girl, and then they cut right to the bedroom. And I was like, what the heck? I was like, <laughs> they cut that scene. I was in that scene. I was so I was so upset. We were both like, "Oh, I can't believe this!" And so then we fast forward to see what the ending was, just to see what happens. And it was a stupid ending. And you're we like, "This, so glad we didn't go to the movie theaters for this." Like, yeah, man, that was so they so, don't so they don't communicate. Like, it's not like they communicate to extras no, whether no. or not. I mean, there's no way. Do you right. technically so, get a credit at, for it? Uh, really? no. Because no. I saw. I saw when I, when I was building the credits for the Hope Actually film, this is the first time I'd ever done it on IMDb, it had on there a credit for like not on screen, but still credited. So, for that movie? 
No, like I saw that as an option when you're crediting oh. someone. I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And no. I can't remember what it said, but it said, so I, I bet you you could probably push for it if you really wanted to. But. Yeah, I, I didn't think it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so That's I was, funny. so I was doing this movie. So, do I, so this is technically my first movie, and I was, a lo it's a lot different than theater. I will say that. Yeah. And, um, but it was funny because I would joke with Sue, who plays my mom. Um, I'd be like, oh, they're gonna cut me. Like, I'm gonna get cut again. <laughs> like, you like, yeah, I, you have like this PTSD. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was so scared. I was like, they're just yeah. gonna cut my scene. So I was joking with Sue, who plays my mom. I was like, they're gonna cut me. I know they're gonna cut me. Like. I'm sitting there yeah. and like they're PTSD. doing they're doing the yeah. shot with me and her at the church and I'm like I, am I even am I in this shot I think it's just my shoulder I was like they're gonna cut me I was like and then um I think there's a something a confrontation or whatever with me and Jake where mm -hmm. I was like I'm like I'm I'm like I don't he's he's you know whatever and I don't want to deal with him and and you were like I I think we're just gonna have him walk up and you guys are gonna be cool or whatever I was like what. What? No, don't cut me. I, I don't want to be cut. But I made the poster. So I know yes. I'm in the movie. Yes. I'm in the poster. Yeah. So I'm like, that's what, this, okay. that's what this call is about, Greg. I'm, I'm sorry to say that all this. Oh. Cut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, so you have like yeah, PTSD. Yeah. You have like PTSD. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, a couple of people asked about that and like, you know, are we cutting, are you going to be cutting things? And I know that's like a normal part of a movie, especially as an extra, extra. But even like uh, even a minor character, I've heard of people like their scenes getting way cut down and they don't have talking parts anymore, like speaking parts. So it's a huge bummer. We the really the way, the way that we wrote it and shot it, it's incredibly efficient. We don't have anything that we can cut. Like a lot of times you'll shoot a lot more stuff than what you need. Right. And then you're cutting stuff out that's not necessary. And that's usually how we'll shoot like a documentary where you shoot more than what you need. But for efficiency's sake, I was like, I don't want to shoot anything that I'm not certain we're going to use, um, right. especially given the fact that everybody's volunteering. So, like, at least in a big budget film, <laughs> you show up, you stand around all day, you get cut. You, like, at least you made a little bit of money, maybe, or you had the chance of being on a large production. But I, th I thought here, like, if people show up and give their time, like, they need to be in that scene. <laughs> so, even yeah. even extras, like, I. So from what I've seen so far with the rough cut, you know, we're, we've not cut any scene. It's, we've not seen anything that's like, just like, oh, that doesn't work at all. Um, because then we would have to reshoot because everything is so efficient. Everything was absolutely necessary to move the story along. And so, yeah, we would have to completely reshoot scenes. And so, yeah, I'm really happy with everything. So I'm in the movie. Okay. That I've seen. You're in, you're in the editor's cut. I can assure you of that. <laughs> editor's so, cut. Yeah, editor's cut. <laughs> Maybe so it's not the me, final cut, but at yeah, least the yeah. editor's cut. Tell me, is this like somebody else's face superimposed? On? <laughs> or it reminds yeah. me of like, a, no. what is it? Mon yeah, they can do like total face body replacement, man. Yeah, it's nuts. crazy. It's like Monsters, Inc. when he's like really excited <laughs> at the end of the movie. I'm on, I'm on the yeah. cover. <laughs> I'm on the like cover totally of the magazine. Off. He's cut off no. by like the UPC or something. <laughs> It's funny. No, that's so not me. me. I, I'm bitter. And tell happy. Me, you're bitter. <laughs> tell me the, some of the differences between stage acting. Yeah. And, yeah, stage acting. I have several people on the film had experience with stage acting, but not as much with on screen. The like the dinner scene at, at the reception. And yeah. we're like yeah. all sitting around the table and we're kind of like doing this. So we're kind it's kind of similar to like cheating out. But mm -hmm. it, but it's it's not oh well the other shot would be like you just want a shot of Sue and so like we would be like too far like we'd be all the way over like so we're not in the shot so we're like talking yeah. over here like yeah da, 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 da. yeah and then, you're, and then like it's like oh now it's Sue and Greg so you're a little bit closer to her so so it's kind of, it's kind of weird the positioning that you get into and you're and um, I'd imagine just the the herky jerkiness of filming compared to a live production where you kind of you start and you just you're in the moment and it's it's almost feels okay. more real, you know. Whereas yeah. usually the way that you film and you know some uh, some ways that people film they do like a lot of one take stuff from one camera, um, and that has its advantages. And we we did that a little bit with a couple of scenes. It's just riskier and it's harder, and so right. we we did the traditional way of 
yeah. establishing coverage, coverage. And so it's, you're doing parts of scenes and you're starting in the middle. And like you said, you're, you're standing in a weird spot. So it's not yeah. natural. So it's just all these you, things that contribute to that. Yeah. Yeah. And you do, and you do the scene over it, like over and over. So, and you have yeah. to do it exactly because yeah. it's, it's frustrating. We had a moment with Sue and her glasses and she was wearing her glasses and that it became, she was like, why did I wear my glasses? Because yeah, like now you got to wear them it off at a certain time and she puts them down at a certain time and it has to line up because if the second shot, she's wearing her glasses again, you're like, wait a minute. Well, yeah. That was something going in to filming. I was like, okay, you're going to be good on yeah. your continuity. Like you're going to, yeah. you're going to pick up a cheese. You're going to bite half the cheese and then you're going to put it down. <laughs> or like, right, you're going to, yeah. you're going to, eat the whole grape or something. And I'd be like, yeah. all right, I need another cheese for the next shot. Cause I got to <laughs> stay the same. So. Yeah. Well, and I think that made it easy for the production team and continuity uh, manager to, to pay attention to those things, but not have as many. So if we've got a bunch of, you know, actors who are paying attention to their own continuity, then it's, you know, we didn't have a whole team doing it. We had one or two right. people, the script supervisor, and then, Usually the second AC, whoever's running Slate, they would help help with some of those details. Um, but I, I, again, we watched through the rough cut, and there wasn't too many that was obvious. And also just me as a filmmaker learning the tricks to be able to cover those up. So that's why we get a lot of single coverage. So we're not cutting from one shot that shows you to another take that also shows you. Um, and so that's helped. So, yeah, I'm pretty I, – nothing too obvious. A few things here and there. Think, well, I won't tell the audience what they are. We'll just say there are some continuity things related to props. And if you, so and if you find, find it, put it on IMDb. That's right. Bonus <laughs> sure, points. Yeah, continuity goofs, whatever. That's right. Half of them will probably be from me. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me, so Greg, you, you alluded to it a, a little bit. So like, you know, joking about getting cut from the, the extras, you know, and being like, uh, you know, bummed about that, but even obviously bigger things in your life, like tell me some ways that you have learned to cope with things not going the way that you thought they would go. Like you had expectations like, oh, this is going to be this way. And then it doesn't turn out the way that you originally thought and hoped because you're a dreamer. You're like, you're, yeah. you're a dreamer. You're always thinking about like, oh, this would be cool. And we don't want to not dream. But then oftentimes as dreamers, then the the reality falls short <laughs> of the dream. So tell me some ways that you have learned to cope and deal with that. Oh man, yeah. I am a huge like I have a huge problem with like abandonment or like not um oh, not feeling good enough um because of things falling through. Like, oh it's it's my fault. Like, oh you were cut because you were you looked dumb or you did terrible or you didn't get a role because you know you're not good enough or not like or this person is no longer friend because you're a terrible friend you know it's I've always mm -hmm. been very um in person personalized everything um, yeah. and made like made made it about myself and like said like oh I, clearly I did something wrong and, yeah. and that's not true at all like I mm -hmm. I know that's not true I mean that's what is put into my head and so having good people around you has really been helpful. I, um, my wife, uh, will be married for five years, uh, coming in nice. March. Um, so she is my number one supporter. She's always right there to tell mm -hmm. me, uh, if I'm feeling down to be like, it's okay. There's something else, you know, if the door, she tells truth when I am telling lies, she mm -hmm. tells the truth. And yeah. that's what you need. You need someone who tells you the truth and keeps you keeps your head up um keeps you humble too she's she's gonna tell me like yeah you got you got a big head uh yeah <laughs> bring that down you're too loud bring it down um but you know you not and not just like a you know a spouse it's it's your friends like you've got to have great friends who are yeah. going to be around um there's something i learned where i don't i don't remember where it is but you have to have people in your life that you look up to that you're side to side with and that you are a mentor to. And mm -hmm. so like, you gotta have your mentorships in anything and accountability when you're struggling with um, with anything from addiction to, you know, just, or working out, like I need to work out better, just anything. You gotta have accountability and you gotta have someone who's gonna keep you focused and that you can go to for wisdom 
And I've got several people in my life that, that, that do that. That I look like, I'm like, Oh, I don't know what to do. And they're like, I got you. You can do this. They motivate you. You've got your brothers or sisters on the same line where they, they keep you, you know, they keep you moving forward. They're, they keep you um, telling you the truth, motivating you. And then you can be that for someone else. And then for me personally, I, you know, God is also something mm-hmm. that, you know, I really have such a strong faith with him and he is, and because you can't really count on people all the time because people will fail you. You know, mm-hmm. even my wife, she, she fails me sometimes. My best mm-hmm. friend fails me, you know, um, th- they're going to fail you and you, you can't just rely on people. Um, so I, you, I, that's why I have Jesus. That's why I have God is that he will never fail me. And yeah. I can always reach out to him and he, and he tells me the truth, what mm-hmm. I need to hear. And he keeps me going and keeps me hopeful. Yeah, so, there you go. Well, that's what this movie is all about. And I felt like even in the production of it, it wasn't just about the output. Uh, it wasn't just, oh, let's make a movie that somebody will watch and experience hope. But even in the process of doing it, um, really providing hope, especially centered around relationships. Because what I hear you talking about is is being able to deal with hardships, say like going through a pandemic and feeling isolated and frustrated and all that stuff. Being able to shoot a film in the middle, in the midst of that, yeah. um, and be able to have some relationships to kind of cope with some of that, I think really provide a lot of hope, I think, for the cast and the crew, at least from the, some of the stories and, and me included. Um, but yeah, it seems like relationship is a big piece of dealing with that, both relationship vertical with God and, and horizontal relationships with yeah, with people. So exactly. sounds like you've surrounded. And I've, I've been blessed to be able to be a part of your story throughout the years yeah. too. Just, yeah, um, yes. and I see, I always see myself as more of a horizontal, you know, with, with people um, and uh, just kind of there for you. I don't think I have any wisdom, but um, just being able to kind of walk with you. And that's been a treat to see you grow um, and your passions and, and all that. So, um, was really excited to be able to cast you for the film and it was, you know, really great working with you. you. Obviously it was fun. So, and I don't know, I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know if you or if Matt, especially Matt knew Mm -hmm. anything about like, you know, the demons that kill me or whatever, but like you guys would be like, oh man, you were you did so great, Greg. Like, oh, you did a good job. Like, great job today. Like Matt, I'd leave for the day and Matt would text me like, hey, great job today. You were you were awesome. He sent me a uh, he, when he called to set this up. He's like, oh, I watched the edit cut and you did such a great job. I'm like, Matt, I'm in it for like five minutes. What? Yeah. Like, because I'm like, I, I I'm like, I didn't do a great job. I, I'm like, okay, whatever. I I'm because t- those voices in my head, they're like, yeah. oh, you, you suck. You don't know. That's you're like in in it for 10 seconds, whatever. And like <laughs> you and Matt constantly and, you know, everyone, Bridget, we're other people, Sue, we're like, yeah, yeah you're doing a great job, Jake. Like all of them yeah. were doing such great to like motivate me. And, mm-hmm. and I was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. awesome. Maybe I am doing they, a good job. That's okay well, to they, say. I, I'm like, yeah, yeah. They mean it. These are, these are real people, you know, people like Matt and Jake and, you know, they don't, they don't pander to people. They don't, you know, so, you know, when they're talking like, Hey, and, and I've gotten the same encouragement from Matt when I feel like, dude, that sucked. I did terrible today. He was like, man, that was great. He was like, he'd be so excited after a scene. And I think that I did that. We, I directed it terrible and I couldn't, he's like, oh, man, I was just like riveted, you know? So like you yeah. need the people that like that around you that are like, give you a little yeah. bit of a truth check. I'm like, no man, right. you're doing great. And then vice versa. We're like, Hey, you know, I think you could have improved on this and, and, oh, and here's yeah. what. And so, yeah, that I, Matt and all those guys have just done a great job of encouraging people along the way. And so really, really happy to have them on the team. So 